this part, I'll be speaking about how the UN approaches the potential impact of AI specifically in the realm of elections. As electoral systems providers, what do we see as the main challenges and risks? What is UN policy? And what kind of advice can we give to national actors? Part of the difficulty in giving firm answers is that we do not yet have a clear picture of how AI will evolve. The effects on elections are still difficult to gauge. But there are some basics, some fundamental reflections that can help us navigate future developments. Insights that both users and developers need to think about now as AI begins to evolve and spread. The first is that we should not assume that AI brings only threats. It has a great potential to be a force for good, including by bringing about greater inclusion and more efficient electoral administration. The second point is that when we do speak about possible manipulative uses, it is helpful to remember that efforts to influence voting behavior are not a new phenomenon. Deception and disinformation in elections preceded our digital age. That also means that it's not only about how things are generated by AI, it's not only about the technology, but also how content is then used, by whom and with what intention. That should help us keep the focus not only on the companies, the technology companies, but also on other stakeholders, including political leaders and their supporters, a point I will come back to. While deception in elections is not new, we also know that elections may be particularly vulnerable to AI-generated falsehoods and to unintended consequences of AI-driven algorithms. It's not just that voters can be tricked or excluded. It is also the paralyzing suspicion that any information may have been manipulated, even if it hasn't. So the stakes are high, as are the potential risks, if we do not recognize them on time. What then? can we advise national actors? Here, it's helpful to distinguish two, two categories of ways in which AI may be used in elections. The first is to use by the public at large, including by politicians and their supporters. And the risks here are those we read about most often in the media. Deep fakes, the manipulation of public opinion, the suppression of voting, and a greater exposure to fraud and cybersecurity breaches. And in this area of information integrity, there is, of course, the challenge of balancing freedom of expression and access to information, as well as the risks of content regulation. This balancing goes beyond elections and has been covered in other parts of this course. But three aspects deserve special mention here. One is that Extra efforts are needed to prevent false or hallucinated information about voting processes, like where and when to vote, or what the eligibility requirements are, or information about election results. Spreading falsehoods on these topics should always be considered unacceptable. Another is that women are particularly vulnerable to online and technology-facilitated violence. AI may worsen this situation, and this calls for additional measures. A further area highlighted by the UN is the responsibility of political leaders and candidates. They play a central role in creating a conducive environment. Ideally, they would commit publicly to not spreading AI-generated false information, to deferring to electoral authorities when it comes to election-related information, and to calling on their supporters to follow their example. There's also a second category of how, how AI can intersect with elections. And this is the use of AI systems by national authorities in their official processes. This could be, say, in the maintenance of voter registries, or the verification of postal ballots, or the detection of possible fraud. And this is an area that has not yet received much attention. Here, the risks revolve around the protection of fundamental rights, including the protection of personal data. They revolve around the reliability and transparency of processes, or the malfunctioning of algorithms, or their unintended bias, and of course also the accountability of the electoral authorities. For the use of AI systems by election administrators, 
the UN has a number of recommendations. One is that, as with any technological innovation, a process of change should start with having a shared understanding of the problem that is to be addressed. What exactly are we trying to fix or improve on? Also, before introducing new technology, it is essential to have broad political support for it. And before a switch is made, there should be ample time to test feasibility, to run trials, and to assess impact. We also recommend that any AI system used in electoral administration should be designed and applied in such a way that it ensures and protects fundamental freedoms and rights. Personal data protection is a key element in this. So is freedom of expression and the secrecy of the vote. Also, legal responsibility for decisions that affect political rights or the outcome of an election should always rest with an identifiable entity or official. And these decisions should remain open to administrative or judicial review. At the end of the day, there should be an individual or legal entity that can be held accountable. Finally, electoral authorities should offer full transparency on how they may use AI systems or how they draw on the products or data from such systems produced by others. This includes making sure that observers and civil society organizations are informed and consulted. As mentioned earlier, we still need to have a clear picture of how AI may affect elections. 2024 will be an important year in that sense. But even when it's hard to see what lies ahead, there are some fundamental and timeless aspects to holding elections. Fundamentals that can serve as a compass, no matter what the technology is.